Element 4, Health and Safety Management Systems. Planning. 1. Outline the key stages of general risk assessment process, and identify the issues that would need to be considered at each stage. Identify the hazards, mechanical hazards, electrical hazards, thermal hazards, noise and vibration, radiation. Decide who may be harmed and how, operatives slash workers, maintenance staff, cleaners, contractors, visitors, public. Evaluate the risks and decide whether precautions are adequate or whether more should be done, likelihood consequence. Record the findings. Review the assessment and revise it if necessary. 2. Outline the factors to be considered when assessing the risk of long-distance transport vehicle driver. The factors to be considered when assessing the risk of long-distance transport vehicle driver are Duration of the journey The demands of the road, complexity, road conditions etc. Means of communication and security issues Physical fitness and health condition Level of training provided Valid driving license Work experience Location and route map awareness Vehicle physical fitness certificate Vehicle, no near due for maintenance Ergonomic factors, for example tail lifts Sufficient fuel availability 3. A. Explain, using the examples, the meaning of the term risk Risk is the likelihood of the hazard will cause harm in combination with severity of injury, damage or loss that might foreseeably occur. E.g., the chances of someone are being killed by coming into contact with electricity. B. Outline the factors that should be considered when selecting individuals to assist. In carrying out risk assessment in the workplace. The factors to be considered are the level of training in health and safety generally, and in carrying out risk assessments in particular. Experience of the process slash activity. The possession of technical knowledge of the plant or equipment involved. The ability to interpret standards, regulations and guidance. Communication and reporting skills. Commitment to the task and attention to detail. Awareness of the individual's own limitations and the occasions when specialist assistance might be required. Accessing sources of information such as organizational or legislation, codes of practice and in-house information, including accidents records. Interpretation of any local regulations and standards. 4. Outline the criteria which must be met for the assessment to be suitable and sufficient. It should be good enough to fulfill legal requirements and prevent foreseeable injuries and ill health from happening. In particular it should State the name and competence of the assessor. Identify the significant hazards and risks arising out of or connected with the work, i.e. those which are most likely to occur and result in harm being at an acceptable low level. Identify all those persons who could be at risk, including workers and others such as visitors. Vulnerable people such as young people should also be identified. Evaluate the effectiveness of current controls. Identify other protective measures that are required to control the risk to an acceptable level. Record the significant findings of the risk assessment. Be appropriate to the nature of the work and remain proportionate to the risks. State the period of time for which it is likely to remain valid. 5. A. Identify work activities that may present a particular risk to pregnant women at work and give an example of each type of activity. Certain hazardous chemical, e.g. lead. Certain biological agents, e.g. the rubella virus. Manual handling, e.g. carrying heavy objects. Extreme of temperature, e.g. working under sunlight. Night shift work, e.g. call centers. Lone working, e.g. kitchen work. Violence. Stress. B. Outline the actions that an employer may take when a risk to a new or expectant mother cannot be avoided. 
change the type of work regular job rotation should be done to avoid boredom in their work. Change the hours of work the shift hours should be reduced to avoid tiredness. Suspend the pregnant women from the workplace suspend them for maternity leave for some period of time. Rest time provide enough rest, break times to reduce the stress due to their work. 6. Give the meaning of the term safe system of work. A safe system of work is a formal procedure based on a systematic examination of work in order to identify the hazards. It defines safe methods of working which eliminate those hazards or minimize the risks associated with them. 7. Outline sources of information that could be consulted when developing a safe system of work. Internal information sources include Accident records Medical records Absence records Risk assessments Maintenance reports Safety representative inspections Audit reports Safety committee meeting minutes External information sources include National legislation, for example regulations Material safety data sheets from manufacturers National codes of practice and guidance notes National and international regulatory bodies, for example HSE in the UK, OSHA in Europe Manufacturers operating instructions Trade associations Safety journals and magazines 8. Outline information that should be given to employees in a training session on a safe system of work. Type of task being undertaken. Analysis can be provided through job safety analysis, the SREDIM method mentioned earlier. Select the task to be analyzed. Record the steps or stages of the task. Evaluate the risks associated with each step. Develop the safe working method. Implement the safe working method. Monitor to ensure it is effective. What equipment and materials are required for the task? The equipments which we are using for that process present some hazards naturally. We want to identify those hazards and implement some control measures in order to avoid those hazards. Who will be carrying out the work? Who will carry out this task and how many of them are involving in that task? What is their experience, knowledge level? Are the vulnerable persons involved or not? What are the hazards associated with the job? The type of hazards associated with the work and whether the worker has undergone any training in identifying those hazards. What controls are recommended by the manufacturer? For the above identified hazards what is the control measure taken in order to minimize the hazards or some control measure that can be given by the manufacturer? What emergency provision is in place are the control measures adequate or are additional controls needed? How will the system of work be monitored? 9. An organization has had an increase in the number of manual handling accidents and associated ill health. Identify the sources of information that may be available to help to reduce the risks to the workers. Or the number of absences due to work-related upper limb disorders in an organization is increasing. Identify possible sources of information that could be used when investigating the increase in absences. Statutory instruments. ACOPS and HSE guidelines. Manufacturers information. European and international official standards. Industry or trade literature. Result of risk assessments. Accident statistics and health, medical surveillance records. The employees involved. Enforcement agencies and other experts. 10. With respect to the management of risk within the workplace. A. Explain the meaning of the term hierarchy of control. The hierarchy of control is a concept used a great deal in health and safety. It is a list of options in order of importance, effectiveness or priority, written so that the most extreme and effective method of control is at the top of the hierarchy, with the least effective at the bottom. B. 
outline, with examples, the standard hierarchy that should be applied with respect to controlling H&S risks in few workplace. The general hierarchy of control. Elimination. Substitution. Engineering controls. Administrative controls. Personal protective equipment. Elimination. If a hazard can be eliminated then the risk created by that hazard disappears. For example, an assembly workshop could stop welding steel in order to avoid the risks inherent in welding operations, and could buy in prefabricated metal components. Substitution. Sometimes hazard elimination cannot be achieved, but it is possible to substitute one hazard with another that creates less risk. For example, one hazardous substance classified as toxic, that is lethal in small doses, is substituted with one that is irritant. Engineering controls. Engineering controls involve the use of an engineering solution to prevent exposure to the hazard. This might be done by isolation or total enclosure. The aim here is to isolate the hazard physically so that nobody is exposed to it. This might be done by total enclosure or containment of the hazard, for example total enclosure of a process which generates dust to prevent its acoustic enclosure of a noisy machine to reduce the noise exposure of those nearby. Separation or segregation, simply placing the hazard in an inaccessible location. An example would be overhead wires where an electrical conductor has been placed out of reach. In this case, precautions have to be taken to ensure that safe distances are maintained at all times, for example the use of goalposts to warn plant operators on a construction site of the safety distances for live electrical overheads. Partial enclosure, for example a hazardous substance might be handled in a fume hood or partial enclosure which the worker can reach into for handling purposes. Air is extracted from the top or back of this partial enclosure so that any airborne contaminants are extracted from the enclosure away from the worker. Administrative controls. Administrative controls are those that rely on procedures and behavior, such as safe systems of work. A safe system of work is a formal procedure which defines a method of working that eliminates hazards or minimizes the risks associated with them. Safe systems of work are necessary whenever hazards cannot be physically eliminated and some element of risk remains. Reduce time of exposure. Many health hazards in the workplace cause a degree of harm that is entirely dependent on the dose that a worker receives, for example the harm caused by noise vibration, radiation and most hazardous chemicals, such as lead. Dash time of exposure. For example, the harm to hearing caused by exposure to loud noise is entirely determined by the noise intensity, measured in decibels, and the duration of exposure. Personal protective equipments. There are instances where none of the above control measures can be used and there are times when some of them can but residual risk still remains. If this is the case then it may be necessary to use personal protective equipment, PPE. Many different types of PPE are available, such as ear defenders for noise, gloves to prevent contact with substances hazardous to the skin, respiratory protection against substances hazardous by inhalation, breathing in, Eye protection against splashes of chemicals and molten metals, mists, sprays and dusts, projectiles and radiation including bright lights. 14. Personal protective equipment, PPE, should only be considered after other control measures have been found to be ineffective or not practicable. Give reasons why PPE should be considered only after other control measures. It does not remove the hazard so should be used when other control measures have been exhausted. It only protects one person, the wearer. Also its correct use relies on the wearer so training in correct use is necessary. It may not protect adequately if it is not fitted correctly or the wrong PPE is selected. It may not be comfortable and may interfere with the wearer's ability to do the job. It may increase overall risk by impairing the senses, for example goggles that mist up, 
hearing protection that masks sounds like fire alarms. It may not be compatible with other items that have to be worn or used. Fit is also affected by personal features such as beards and spectacles. If it fails it fails to danger. It may be contaminated if not stored correctly. People often do not like wearing PPE so it may not be worn. PPE may be more expensive than addressing the hazard at source. 15. A. Give the meaning of the term permit to work. A permit to work, PTW, the system is a formal, documented safety procedure, forming part of a safe system of work, which ensures that all necessary actions are taken before, during and after particularly high-risk work. B. Identify three types of work that may require a permit to work and give, outline the reasons why in each case. Hot work. Permit systems are commonly used to control hot work where naked flames will be used, for example propane, butane or oxyacetylene torches, or where a significant ignition source will be created, for example welding or grinding operations. Typical precautions for control of hot work. Flammable materials are removed from the work area. Items that cannot be removed are covered with fire retardant blankets. Floor is swept clean. A suitable fire extinguisher is at hand. A fire watcher is present in the area. Wooden floor is damped down. Work on live electrical systems. The high risk associated with working on or near live electrical systems means that this type of work is usually subject to permit control. In particular, permits are usual for work on or near high voltage systems. A permit system is used to ensure that working live is justified, that is it is not possible to work with the power off. All precautions are in place. The workers are competent to do the work. Machinery maintenance. Maintenance work often involves the removal or disabling of safeguards and control systems. For large, complex industrial machinery more than one person may be involved in the work and they may be required to work inside the machinery. This can generate high risk that might be best controlled using a permit system. A permit system is used to ensure that work is carefully planned assessed and controlled. The nature of the work is communicated to those who need to know about it. Power sources are isolated and locked off. Stored energy is released or secured. The workers are competent to do the work. Confined spaces. Entry into confined spaces can be extremely hazardous, so should always be under the control of a permit to work system. This will require a competent person to carry out a risk assessment and then develop a safe system of work which identifies all the necessary precautions for entry and the emergency arrangements that must be put in place. 16. Identify four categories of workplace safety signs and give an example of each. Prohibition, directed at stopping dangerous behavior, for example no smoking. The signs are circular with a black pictogram on a white background with a red border and red diagonal crossbar. Warning, tell people to be careful of a particular hazard, for example forklift trucks operating in the area. The signs are triangular with a black pictogram on a yellow background with a black border.